Hi, my name is Jamie Henricks, and I'm the archivist at the Japanese American National Museum. In this video, I'll be showing you some of the museum's archival collections, as well as how you can take care of your documents at home. Nearly the entire first floor of Janum's collection storage is dedicated to two-dimensional artifacts donated to the museum. This includes letters and diaries, photos, family records, and many other unique documents. Each record helps to deepen our understanding of the Japanese-American experience. One of my jobs as an archivist is to ensure that each artifact is rehoused or properly stored for safekeeping at museum-level standards. The first step for any new artifact is to box it. This simple first step will protect it from the elements such as light, dust, high or low temperature, and high or low humidity. The boxes used at Janum are acid-free, meaning they won't react with whatever is stored inside. These boxes slow down the rate that paper becomes yellow and brittle, and they are reinforced at the corners, which means they're sturdy and not likely to be crushed immediately in a fall. Recently, Janum was gifted with several dozen essays saved by Thule Lake teacher Garrett Starmer. These first-hand accounts were an assignment for the 1943 Senior Problems class, which required students to write their autobiography. These essays are priceless first-hand narratives of life before and during camp, showing the challenges and impact of incarceration from a teenage perspective. It's important to ensure that these documents are protected from the elements. Although they will eventually be fully processed, the best way to store these papers temporarily is to lay them in a flat box large enough to pick up the papers easily. Another collection Janum accepted recently will give you a glimpse into the next stage of archival processing, the sorting and organizing stage. This collection has letters sent from two Japanese-American soldiers to a pen pal in New York during World War II. Private Robert Miyazaki and Private Asaji Sato of the 100th Battalion wrote letters and sent photos to Miriam Sturberg, who they met by chance at Coney Island, New York, before they shipped out to Europe. Unlike the Tule Lake student essays, the letters in this collection have been put in order. In this case, I decided the best way to organize this collection was to first divide up the letters by sender. Next, I put the letters into chronological order. There's no best way to organize a collection, though. At Janum, some collections are organized by subject matter, time period, and people involved. Once a collection has been sorted and organized, my next step is to label folders and describe the contents. In the Sohei Hori and Harold Landon collection, the letters are organized chronologically and placed in folders. Each folder has a short written description of its contents, such as Letters from Sohei to Harold, 1943. While incarcerated at Manzanar, 18-year-old Sohei Hori frequently mailed letters with drawings to his friend Harold Landon in Los Angeles. Sohei writes of the cold temperatures, sports activities, and friends at Manzanar. For this collection and many others, Janum volunteers wrote detailed descriptions of each letter. Our volunteer has looked at every letter and written down a standard set of information for each one, such as the sender, date, dimensions, condition, and a basic description of the letter. Because these letters are over 75 years old and traveled folded up and were probably read many times, they're not in perfect condition anymore. To protect each letter, every page has been placed in protective mylar pockets. After the donation is safely boxed, sorted and organized, and labeled and described, the artifacts are now ready for a spot in the temperature-controlled environment of our storage area. With a few mindful practices, your own personal letters, family records, and important mementos can be protected, preserved, and organized for generations to come. <laughs>